Uh, one thing, one thing I wanted to talk to you about because uh, I saw a couple of your videos uh, you made, your your uh, shorts, I guess we'll call them, your reels or whatever, where you made a couple of phone calls. And I'll actually I'll pull this up on uh, on X here. I just want to make sure I can share the audio. I have such a bad habit of sharing Windows here and not sharing the audio. So let me know if you can hear this. I'm going to go down to here we go. So uh, for those of you, just for context here, I'll pause this. Uh, for context here, um, the House of Commons government officials, MPs, have been found to have been colluding with foreign nationals, uh, basically against the interests of Canadians, against the interests of Canada. And can you see this, by the way, Greg? Yes. Okay, good. We're not going to watch the whole thing, are we? It's like seven minutes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, maybe we can just talk about it then. But you made one call here to the RCMP and you made one call to. Um, Crime Stoppers, which was awesome. And um, you basically wanted to report the crime. Hey, uh, you know, well, you know what? I don't want to, I'm not going to fucking do a, a terrible job of telling a story. I'll let you kind of. Uh, sure. Explain what you did there. But uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So I was driving back from uh, church actually last Sunday and I saw a, it's in, it was in an area I'm not usually in. It's like north of the city. And I saw a Crime Stoppers billboard. And I was like, huh, that'd be funny. Like, I should just call Crime Stoppers and be like, hey, I think there there might be like treason in Parliament. Can you look into this crime? Like, can you stop this crime? It's treason, you know? Like, have, have you heard of this? Uh, so, yeah, that was like, a funny. It's just a dumb idea. And I'm like, okay, I'll just, that's good. Like, it's e I thought for me, I'm like, that's easy content. I'll just record this phone call right. and post it. <laughs> and thankfully, the woman on the phone was like pretty, pretty, uh, like kind of funny about it. And she's like, uh, yeah, Par <laughs> I was like, uh, yeah, government officials committing treason. Like, I don't think we like look into that, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. And then I thought, you know what? Fuck it. Let's just call the RCMP too. And I'm glad I did. It was a, ver a very uncomfortable phone call. Very kind of depressing too. Cause it's like, I am trying to coach these guys to give a fuck. I'm trying to coach these guys. I'm explaining to them the situation and it was like pulling teeth to mm -hmm. try and get RCMP officers to give a fuck about the potential of treason in the House of Commons. Like it was very like depressing, but I'm also glad I did it because it's like, at least I made them like uncomfortable. You know what I mean? Like at least I made them have to talk to the public and answer my questions and have to fucking deal with me. Like at least I made them fucking do something, even if it's just talking to me for fucking like eight minutes. Like at, at least I actually, uh, I don't know, caused a little bit of pain in their lives because, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's, it's, if you're a, if you're a Patriot Canadian, if you're a Canadian who gives a fuck about this place, we're in a lot of like pain right now, <laughs> you know? And it feels yeah. like we can't fucking go anywhere other than watch fucking Jeremy McKenzie rant on his fucking webcam. Like that's the only place we can go to fucking feel like good about what the fuck is happening right now. And it's good. You said it's easy content for you. And at least you had made them have an uncomfortable conversation. But the beautiful part about that is now that content is out there. And I mean, not that the RCMP is short of black eyes, but you've given them yet another one that they're going to have to deal with. And, uh, you know, they, sh they should, they should feel that shame and they should be faced with it every single day of their lives that they wear that uniform, you know? Yeah. And, you know, I was reading some of the comments and I, I it really speaks to hopefully a cultural shift that can happen in this country but people are like wow like people were like a you know it's, it is the comment section i try not to look too much into it but there were a <laughs> lot of comments who are like whoa like you're not you're a hero but basically being like wow like great wow great work you know like wow like you're doing so much and it's like guys i just made a phone call you right. know what i mean like this is not you know it's not that much effort to do that. Like you, you know, you could do that sort of thing. And, and I guess like the more I've turned it over in my head, like watching, watching the decay of our country over the past, like five years, watching this all happen. What I keep turning over in my head is like, what the fuck is wrong with Canadians? Like what is mm. missing? And like, obviously I compare it to the States because there's this sort of autonomy that exists in the States. This sort of like my first amendment, my freedom, like no one's going to take that away from me. They have a lot of like passion here that surrounds this sort of, you know, core belief of what the country is all about. And it really politically activates them. It makes them very sensitive to this stuff. 
and there's a lot of patriots down there who will be like no like that's against our first amendment and people fucking get out of their couches and like they're, they're ready to fucking say something do something like get activated about it and then over here in canada you know it's like you'll show them hey hey there might be treason going on hey like you know they're replacing us in their own country like you know like hey they're, they're like indoctrinating children look at this and then you get this response of oh jeez hey <laughs> what are you gonna do about that? Oh gosh, Jeez. And it's like, what is that? How do we change that? How do we change that? Like, kind of OGs. Oh, like, I'm just gonna finish my six pack. To uh, we got to fucking do something about this. Like, we can't let them get away with this. We need, like, you know. And I think America has a found like the foundational myths because like we really like to connect ourselves our identity to like these myths right like the the states has now they have trump like they created maga and trump as like part of this myth of uh of what it means to be american and that's connected to the first amendment obviously and it's like well, well what do we have here what do we have to hold on to mm. like it's very flimsy what we have to hold on to here it's like it's a fucking it's a fucking hockey stick maple syrup fuck you know, like we don't got that much to hang on to. Like, you, I feel like even like Vimy Ridge or something like this, like that, that, that already feels like a reach. I'm not saying right. it's like a genuine thing, but it's like, we, we need things that are more closer and like foundational and powerful to, uh, to kind of like activate ourselves to, uh, you know, to, to kind of keep this place together. Because if we don't have that, like, and I'm sure you already know what I mean. Like, it, this place is already falling apart. And it, and I really feel like it comes down to men not actually identifying with the country anymore. Yeah. And this is actually a phrase that I've wanted to popularize. I was thinking about this while I had some time off from content. But it's like, there's so many people where it's like, you don't even care about the country. You care about your bank account. Yeah. You know, like that's, and that's, I feel like there's so many people out there that, and where that's what it boils down to. That's exactly right. Um, I, was, I keep talking to my one uh, friend, much smarter than I am, and he was saying, you know, things happen gradually, but then all at once. And you can look out your window, and in the states, it's you got what like ten x the population, so they see it more, you know, more apparent. But I, outside of the odd church here and there, I'm not looking out the window and seeing anything on fire. Houses aren't being broken into, and things being stolen here in my town. Things are generally comfortable right here. We're distracted with the Oilers and the playoffs and this and that. And things haven't gotten bad enough for people. But at some point, like you said, in the next five, 10 years, there's going to be a breaking point where everything's going to come crumbling down all at once. And it will be too late, but then people will care. But we're not there yet. They're too comfortable right now. Like you said, they care more about their bank account than their country because things for us are comfortable because – outside of like rising gas prices and grocery prices, things aren't that bad. They're not that bad yet, but we're, we just, it's like we're standing on the beach looking at the tsunami and being like, Oh, look at the water and not doing anything about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I do agree that like, you know, things aren't bad enough yet for people to care. And I guess the, the real question is what can people like us do to, <clears throat> to catch those people when they're ready to kind of, you know, wake up to reality. How do how do we kind of catch those people and like push them in the right direction to kind of just like like immediately get on the right side of things in the right position, mm -hmm. saying the right things, believing the right things. Um I don't necessarily agree though with this or at least like I think I I like to push back on this point that everything's going to kind of crumble out all at once cuz I I don't think that's going to happen cuz I don't think that's in <laughs> You know, it. I feel like this is a controlled demolition of what mm. they're trying to do, right? They're, they're mm. trying to slowly dismantle uh, the country. You know, they're they're making sure all the rich people leave. You know, it's like okay, we're raising taxes, so if you're like a smart businessman, like time to leave. And like they're kind of doing all these things to slowly siphon money out of the public uh, through taxes and all this. And um, you know, they they because it's a slow and controlled thing, people aren't waking up as much as they could so i think it's actually in their best interest to not have it crumble all at once and you know to bring up the topic of civil war which is something that people have been talking a lot more specifically in the states though right. you know i feel like if you go to certain city centers in america it's already like that you know you, yeah. you can already just 
steal stuff like you can already just like go into i, I don't know the specific uh places and laws it's probably la or something but it's like there's literally laws where it's like okay we're not going to like we're gonna just let people shoplift you know and i feel like it's going to be a slow decay like that where slowly but surely the police force starts to enforce the law less and more criminal behavior starts to kind of just start to slowly but surely run rampant and then sure maybe there's going to be like a more violent confrontations that happen but in terms of this official like okay beep beep like you know the civil war has started these are the two sides like i don't think it's going to happen that way i think it's going to continue to be a slow decay more criminal behavior more violence sure more death Maybe maybe there'll be like vigilantes trying to protect themselves or protect innocent lives. And like, but my, I guess my point is, is it's just going to, I like, it's not going to be like, hey, like this next on CBC News, the civil war continues. No, no, no. It's going to be like, <laughs> it's going to be like, no, no, no. There's like, oh, there's a horrible, a horrible, uh, violent occurrence that happened. Everything else is fine, by the way. You know, like, it's just like there, uh, yeah, there seems to be this other totally random event that happened to be violent. But uh, does that make sense? Like, they're not going to, it's yeah, not going to no, be, I get it. this, it's going to be a slow, uh, a slow decay. And uh, I think it's our job to try and, um, you know, fast track people to <clears throat> radicalize them, to show them what's actually happening and try to just kind of get them on board with like a concrete solution. Um, and I, I think there's, you know, there's, that can be its own conversation of like what the solution is. I'm kind of of the mind that, um, you know, there, there does need to be a political solution. And I know that people maybe don't like to hear that all the time, but it's like, at the end of the day, there are going to be power structures, mm -hmm. you know, always, no matter what happens and what the nature of politics is, getting a large enough group of people moving in the same direction, you know, and then, and then securing power and, and ensuring that like, you know, we, we get what we want to help rule the nation or whatever. And it's, yeah, I don't know. It's, there's value in professional organization, mm -hmm. like a lot. Even so. if we did devolve into some like anarchist wet dream or something where it was like, some violent coup, civil war, or whatever, even if everything disintegrated, then you're going to have to rebuild something. You're going to need some sort of structure, some sort of hierarchy. So it might not look like the type of parliament system we have, but you're going to have to form some sort of government, um, you know, to keep things, keep things going, you know, and how, yeah, you're right. What does that look like? I don't know, but there's gotta be something. And you know, I'm, I, I also, and I, I just wanted to jump in there real quick. Ideas that like that come from Diagalon or that are popular in Diagalon, they're becoming popular with regular Canadians. Mm -hmm. There's just like a disconnect. There's just like they don't know about Diagalon or or maybe maybe uh, they're not like fully there. But it's like there 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 really is a lot of commonalities between your average frustrated Canadian who's like apolitical and like doesn't even follow politics. And things that uh, Jeremy and Ferryman say, like, the, like there's a yeah. lot of commonalities there. And it's just a matter of kind of like, you know, cracking that code and uh, being able to kind of like slowly reach these people and give them a sort of like, you know, vehicle to all move, move together on. I also think, uh, and, and I, I, it holds true, everything rises and falls in relationships. So it could be a Jeremy or a Ferryman. You know, to the average person watching, there is some internet personality, right? They run a podcast, but their friend they go hang out with, their coworker, their whatever the case is, those real life relationships, and which is something they encourage you to do, right? Their their tribe and train is the is the mo right now. Find your people, you know, and get real life relationships, and it's through those real life relationships that a real trust is built. And that you can actually have a profound effect on somebody's life and shift their worldview, you know, and you then you're you're creating a, a safe place, you know, sort of use the gay term, but a, a safe place for those worldviews, for those opinions, right? And and when they get to know you as a person, they know that you're not some freak, uh, that you're just another citizen just like them, that wants the best for your family and your kids just like them. And you know, that's the way I think the real change happens. You need people to go out there, like you said, to be the tip of the spear to 
put the ideas out there to get them into the popular, to get them to the zeitgeist, right? He said normal Canadians are starting to think the same things that Diagonal thinks. They're just not aware of them. But you also need to build those real life in-person relationships. I think that's key. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I, I, I think that um, sometimes people online can can like, to, they like to butt heads and say, no, 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 this is the answer. No, that's the answer. And I think ultimately it's a combination. I think it is a combination of the kind of more prepper side of things of like, you know, connect with your community, learn to live off the land. Like, yeah. I think there's definitely a lot of value in that. Um, but I also don't think that's like the only answer either. I, I, I think mm -hmm. the other either it, the other answer is to continue to do, you know, continue to form, uh, you know, professional organizations or, or sort of like, you know, creating meaningful propaganda and fighting yeah. the propaganda war. Like there's some, so there's some great people who have, uh, I don't know if they're from Diagalon, you know, wiretap media, some other people, uh, Derek Rance has been like putting together some good pieces. That's huge. Like that yeah. stuff is, yeah. that stuff is huge. And especially because the truth is on our side, especially because like the righteousness is on our side. If we can continue to focus on making propaganda messages like that, like that shit's powerful. That shit's very powerful. And yeah, um, yeah like it's, it, it, I, I see the online thing as a huge part of the war as well. Although, although, oh, for sure. For sure. although it's harder, you know, it's harder because of, you know, getting canceled or, getting our stuff banned, blah, blah, blah. Sure. But it's, it's still when thing, when something's successful online and it's where it's like wildfire, like that is like, that's like sending out a nuke, you know, like it can be very, very powerful. And going back to what you said at the beginning of our interview, you said, uh, you know, you just, you're appreciator of good media, good TV shows, good movies, good art, good culture that way. And, uh, and you know, we have a competency crisis, right? I'm not a, a big star Wars. I'm more of a star Trek guy, but, nerd i know but uh the new star wars acolyte uh there's like it's it's i have not seen it i've just seen like screenshots of people complaining about it about how it's super woke like all the disney star yeah. wars stuff and there's this one scene i saw where there's like a fire outside in space which should be impossible so there's like a competency crisis people are doing stupid shit so if you can really? be right-minded and if you can put out good quality media that's good shit you're going to help help win that culture war, right? And I think you're right. I think there's a synergy between the real life, but also getting that content out there. Good content, shit that is actually good, that is informative, that is entertaining, all of the above, right? And you know, maybe, mean, memes. Diagon's great with memes. Maybe maybe there's a maybe there's a way to fast track that, you know, to to, to get the attention of a Star Wars fanboy and be like, are you aren't you tired? of this star wars content being shit and not making sense it's because of joe biden and the left like we need to stop <laughs> if you want your star wars to be better content right he's right that's, that's the dream that's the dream to uh get, get the star wars fanboys online get them radicalized radicalize the guys with funko pops on the wall then it's totally over uh -huh.